Cambodia. They have all the answers necessary towards the Philippine squad. Even the Melissa last pick there does incredible up against the Joy and the Faramis. Even the Beatrix in lane. So I expect Cambodia to be able to, you know, pull off a little bit more of a fight this time around. Chama, oh, unfortunately, Fury was actually there. He took away the little small camp from Chama, but it's all good right now. Kalteezy also going to get hooked, uses the Retribution early. Anything interesting when it comes to spells or emblems, Gideon? Uh, looking at the spells and emblems, honestly, nothing out of the ordinary here. Very typical stuff all across the board. Uh, I'm not sure about the sub emblems, but I think it should be rather standard here. In the next 70 seconds or so, nothing much should technically happen, but the fact that Ogwin, you know, he's going to be on the support. He needs to kind of work with few. Trading against Seacat is extremely easy for Joy. But as soon as it becomes a 2v2, that's when you're like a little hesitant, right? You don't necessarily want to waste your time wasting spells on a Joy who can dodge the Iron Hook. So I can see that there's a bit of a dilemma in the mid lane. Ooh, this is the lane that does really well for the Arlet though, right? I mean, that winning matchup already set up by Cambodia as well. Something definitely that they can utilize, and they're already utilizing it here. Chama with a very aggressive invade, understanding that Few doesn't have the ultimate yet. No electrifying beats, so he should still be able to soak in that damage. Coming in just from the rhythm. Whereas in the bottom lane as well, it feels like, again, Burnix Flash have set up a lot of these winning lanes that are doing really good right now. Melissa into Beatrix, Arlet into Lapu. They just need to utilize it more. They need to capitalize and they cannot let Kyle TZ invade as he pleases. Mm -hmm. But here's the problem, right? If, let's say, Cambodia wants to start pushing back against Kaltizi invading, they're going to need to forcefully get priority over those side lanes, right? So you're expecting Beatrix to use one of her alts. You're expecting Lapu to use one of those alts. And for Lapu, it's pretty horrendous if you have to use the Bravest Fighter just to clear a wave, just to be part of a fight. And Philippines, they recognize this, right? So that's why they are allowing the side laners to be aggressive. And that's why they're getting these iron hooks Whoa. on people out of position. Oh, Cambodia, they find first blood. Good, good targeting there with electrifying beats. But Vengeance comes through. That's a lot of damage placed on. And it's still going to be Kyle TZ who secures the retry. Super Chama able to escape. ATM missing there with the stun. It's going to be Few who punishes ATM. Maybe looking for a kill. But again, it's Kyle TZ who wants to push even further. Invading the jungle. And down below, how do you do it? Super Marco does it again. It's a 1v1. And he doesn't even let Fury pop the Inspire. Yeah, I, I'm i surprised. Fury must have really got caught off guard there. I was expecting him to at least get the Inspire off to make sure that he lives, or at the very least, trade evenly against Super Marco. But he's doing something right. And I don't know whether we ha we can show you guys that replay of that 1v1 because it's straight up murder. No Inspire. I don't know if that was, again, a creative choice. ATM now jumping in, but it gets stunned up. And that might just oh, be a soul <laughs> kill. But oh, ATM! with an outplay up in the top lane under the tier 1 utilizing that final slash but few will be able to come up and try to punish him ATM though with a few good resets and the vengeance is able to survive again just holding on to the lead that Cambodia has in the XP lane Man, FlapTZ just needed to get that one auto attack off and as soon as he realized that the animation got cancelled he was like oh no I'm out of here Iron Hook connects so yeah, Ogwen again, gonna be punished down. Chama with a displacement now, bringing Super Marco back to the team with a mortal coil. But there's not gonna be enough damage to actually follow it up now. The go away, forcing Few out, has the vengeance, a good snipe oh, oh, with a hook oh, to respond it over to with a flicker as well. Cambodia this game. Sure, it's still Philippines with the lead, but Cambodia are not letting Philippines do as they please. Yep, they've got the lead now. They at least have a two kill lead over them, but the Philippines are still ahead in gold. They're still about what? 900, 800? Yeah, about 9, 000, uh, 900 gold at this point of time. But let's see. Philippines, the next play that we're going to expect to see from them, like, Ooh. look at this. The Iron Hook is good, but that's not all. This was the very first Iron Hook. This is another one coming up in a little bit. And that's why you got to be careful when you see a Cambodian lock in this Franco. I think in many international tournaments, it's been very nasty. 
Man, it, it has really been Super Chama though. Whoa, what happened here? Turtle control held on by Cambodia. Count TZ with a miss on that retry. No, ATM gets pulled back by the Shadow Stampede only to give an assist over Ogwen, assisting the enemy team to take him down there. And ATM will definitely be happy with that. Jumps in with a final slash as well to clear out the waves. And hey, that's the equalizer that Cambodia were looking for. Mm -hmm. Now they take a very clean lead over the Philippines. It doesn't mean that the Philippines is out of this just yet. They, stu they still do need a little bit of time, especially for Super Marco, right? He's been farming hard, but he doesn't have access to the mystery shop, so he doesn't get those discounts. He's going to have to do it, uh, to do it the good old-fashioned way, just farming up in the lane and dragging this out for a little bit longer. Here, though, in the XP lane, despite ATM having a two-kill lead over FlapTZ, it still is FlapTZ who has done more damage to the turret, doing pretty good, actually, as a Lapu against the Arlet. You'd expect the Lapu to be the one bullied here, to have the turret being as low as ATM's, but... Hey, I really, I'm curious to see what FlapTZ actually built up here. Definitely a steel leg plays, but did he go for the Bloodlust Axe instantly? Uh, we'll have to take a look later on. As, again, he's just going to be using Bravest Fighter to constantly clear out the waves. Trying to go in for the stun as well. ATM needs to respect this Bravest Fighter, and it's still going to be FlapTZ yep. who just clears out the wave. So that's how he's able to escape from a lot of... Of the kill pressure that ATM has, but with that shove, it does give ATM a chance to freeze the wave. And he actually miscalculates a bit there. Wait, what's going on in the mid lane here? It feels like Cambodia was like getting posturing themselves for a potential ambush, but it didn't seem to be successful, right? But the ambush was coming at a good timing. There's like seven more seconds until the turtle comes up, and we're seeing that both EXP laners are making their way down bot side. Oh, almost another good Renner's Apathy. Fury able to just read that out. Gold buff taken away by Super Marco. Turtle number three. Hook only connecting onto the turtle. Kaltizi two levels up. Super Chama looking for that retry battle. But Kaltizi jumps in with a phantom execution. And even the puncture. He's able to space away from the bloody hunt. Beautiful plays as the cult ultra comes down. Giving Kaltizi another HP. Brought a play with. Flap Tizi with the bravest fighter onto Fury. Picking up a double kill. As that's Fury with the electrifying beats. One more shot on towards Chama. But he will not do it. In the bottom lane. You oh. kill as Fury dives in. The turret almost takes him down. Seacat noticing it now trying to punish him down but he has to be careful because Bren and Team Philippines right now have been able to secure pure control even in Cambodia's jungle. Yep, they've taken all the tier 1 outer turrets right now and that's huge for them. Now the jungle is getting invaded constantly. Super Marco, I mean, Super Marco is having the time of his life right now despite the 2v1. As long as the iron hook is on cooldown, he's going to disrespect that space. Wow. Just wow. Kyle TZ, that was an absolutely phenomenal play. I can't I can't move on, Gideon. The way he was able to just space and bob and weave around the bloody hunt, that's a target auto-lock ability. How do you dodge away from that? That was and he, on top of that, he got the retry on the turtle. So he wasn't just dodging away, he was simultaneously also putting his focus on that HP bar. Yeah, he he is just a different beast, man. He's got it feels like he's playing on a tablet or something because he's getting more it feels <laughs> like he has more vision than he should. But I have to admit, after watching him play like that and considering your response, does that make you want to switch back into the jungle role just to play Lancelot? I don't know about that, man, because right now it does seem like ATM is getting in a bit of a pickle. That's a dive, and that's Super Marco with the snipe, unable to connect you. They did some damage, but ATM is able to utilize to reach that super well. It's an outplay coming in with the rotations as well. The reaction from Cambodia, absolutely massive, and a decimation follows Super Marco through. Kaltizi will try to look for a trade down below, but it's still not going to be worth it. Definitely Cambodia with an Amazing, amazing punish. Yeah, the reaction time was insane, but Kyle Teasy, it's all up to him. If he wants to make this steal, this is your moment. If he does this, if he makes this miracle play happen, Gideon, then yes, I want to be a, a jungler again. But again, <laughs> there's just no way he can go for that. If he does, 
Oh man, I don't know what I'd say. CalTZ will just choose to clear out that bottom lane, but Philippines, you can already see a few of these cracks now. A few of their, of their mistakes have been exploited, and Cambodia have done a really good job with the reactive plays. Just waiting for the proactive movements from Philippines, waiting for them to overcommit and overextend. I mean, considering how, what, what the Raging Slash was doing during in the middle of that fight under the Tier 2 does bring up a couple of questions. And I think the Philippines were getting comfortable, but not for long. Uh-oh, Ogwen. Got back to the team here. Has the call alter. Able to escape for a bit. Super Kamau gonna be baited into the fight. It's Flap TZ. Access that frontliner in the front. Still just baiting a few resources, not wanting to fully commit. Philippines understand. And even Cambodia. Cambodia has the Lord here. Dying there would definitely be a disaster. If you read the item power fight that I was waiting for on that Melissa, a full staff by in the tenth minute of the game, and now he's gonna have even more pressure to play with. But Kyle, ever standing idly by, he's always doing something, and he's stealing away the purple buff this time around, getting the turret in the bottom lane, and now puncturing out to safety. They're trying to chase him down, but it might just be a reactive play. Supermarket. Definitely gonna be engaged on his flap. Easy jumps in for Raven's fight back line, but the bloody hunt locks you down, and that's the damage to come through. That's two. One roamer, the final slash isolates. Oh, Super Chama, as he looks for more, it's still gonna be Super Marco kiting away with Renner, just utilizing that range. But Cambodia again, it's the reactive plays over the reactive plays, and it keeps on going. Yup, they're disgustingly good, especially the reaction times. Like, you gotta give it to Fury there. In this replay alone, you can see, oh, this looks like an overextension, but Fury immediately pops the alt early, delays his dash just to get the initial bounce off to allow P uh, D7 to live a little bit longer so the rest of his team can posture around and then start cutting them down one by one. Like, the Chima on this Mardis, he is looking a lot better compared to game number one. Oh, doing a lot better is definitely an understatement, Gideon, right? He is doing absolute wonders because not only is he playing really well in these team fights, but he's also sometimes out retreating Kyle TZ. He's able to keep a head to head, you know, a level playing field despite him being two levels behind. Chama is looking for that steal once again, but Kyle TZ will be able to out retreat him this time around with a phantom execution as well. But look at the back line! Super Marco got caught in the bloody hunt, and it is a chaotic team fight. Definitely benefited by the side of Cambodia. But few now with electrifying beats and the best able to jump into the back line with Super Shimon trying to escape with a mortal. The Iron Hook not going to be able to connect. Now Fuse waiting on the cooldowns. Dashing in, dashing back again. Oh. The final slash. But ATM will fall. The chaotic team fight in the end is worth it for Team Philippines. Oh, I feel so bad for Few. After all that commitment, he still wasn't able to take out Shima for the shutdown, as Shima had a nice sidestep before the dash connected, resulting in no resets and leaving being left out to dry. And now, with this Lunas Lord, well, this regular Lord, Elemental Lord, on the horizon, let's see how they play it out as Fantasy gets locked down. Flap. Waiting for the Bravest Fighter now, goes in for the stun, uses the anti-CC part of the ultimate right now. Super Chama gets, well, unfortunately isn't able to get anything done there. Just disengages with the help of the cover provided by the team. Conceal by D7. Again, looking for a random pick here. The Philippines, well again, just back up. They will utilize the Lord to go for another push, another attempt at a siege on Cambodia's base. Uh, all right, let's see how the siege is going to work out, right? Because in terms of high ground defense, at least with Cambodia's lineup, with this Melissa, it becomes so much easier to handle, plus the Yeeve as well. They've got plenty of ways to peel to play front to front. And honestly, for the Philippines, it's starting to get difficult, right? It, it's starting to show that jumping into the back line, playing back to front against Cambodia with the lineup that they have, it's no easy task. And Flap TZ, no matter how far he jumps forward, D7 locks him down. Oh man, Fuel definitely overextending there, punished almost instantaneously. Ogwen, Ogwen with a cold oh. ultra to try to save Fuel, but ends up dying as well. It's all just a distraction technique. Flap TZ to go for the base turret down below. Two kills over, a roamer and a mid laner for the base turret. Looking at their score and their stat line, honestly, I would have to say it's still worth it here, um, Gideon. 
Uh, I would say that is very worth it for Cambodia. They even equalize the score. They don't lose any inhibitors as well. And I, I feel like the Philippines, the fact that they dropped the ball, all right, fine. We, we have to play for the ultra late game here. It's not about scaling anymore. It's about just having enough gold for utility items to be swapped out when the time calls for it. At this point, right, uh, with more map pressure that they were able to get with that turret as well, they're going to be able to utilize that, and they're going to be able to actually get some more vision on the Franco. Kyle has got to be careful here. D7, I thought he wanted to go for a flicker uh, towards the Bloody Hunt, maybe, to look for it, but unfortunately, he wasn't able to do it. Kyle Teasy with a good Thorn Rose and a good Disengage. Both teams will just play it safe again, right? They don't really want to go for anything too crazy with no neutral objectives up. Uh, Cambodia, later the game goes, I'm actually, I actually need to ask you this question, Gideon, who mm -hmm. has the upper hand when it comes to late game? When it comes down to late game, I will say that Cambodia has a very slight advantage here. When it comes down to overall team fights, I will say that Ogwen will get to a point where he basically could potentially just one-shot Fury, depending on what his build is. I'm not sure what he's going for just yet, but I know that he's got the traditional utility items. I want to see how he tops off his build. Some people go for damage, other people start thinking, you know what, since this game is going on so long, I might as well just get in a Clock of Destinies, like a fourth item as a support, because why not? At this point, even if I try to go for uh, a Necklace of Durant, it probably wouldn't matter because the majority of my teammates already have it inbuilt at the very least for the anti uh for the anti-healing so he could just potentially i would say divine glaive best best probable answer nice final slash to isolate flap tz right now super marco is able to free hit in the back line but the real world manipulation does its work look at the back line of cambodia though right now they're trying to deal some damage but it is gonna be ogwen he gets taken down one roamer for xps view is looking for one more hit he finds it on the sea cat he gets punished as well though and it's a two for two trade both teams having three members up and even their gold laners and their junglers so both these teams are still very capable of going for Lord Dance. Mm, yeah, it's it's not easy, but the fact that they trade it evenly does show you that Cambodia, they, they're building up confidence. They're like, okay, we've recovered. We managed to minimize the bleeding, bleeding, and yes, our inhibitor is exposed, and that's something that the Philippines can actually abuse, but at the very least, if it boils down to a 5v5, Cambodia has a damn good chance at taking this home. Flap already trying to zone Super Chama away now with Ogwen as well. That's a Shadow Stampede baiting out the Mortal Coil, and that should do it right there. Unless D7 is able to make a Flicker play onto the Bloody Hunt here. Cal TZ gets it. Flicker Bloody Hunt on towards Ogwen. Only the Rover right now as he flickers forward. There gets brought back actually. There's gonna be a Renner's Apathy onto D7. Philippines definitely will be happy with a trade. A Lord this time around enhanced only for a Roamer. Yep. That, uh, pretty worth it for the side of the Philippines, and especially if any target were to die, it would have to be Ogwin. At least with the farm as passive, he can come back up a lot sooner compared to some of his other teammates, depending on the number of stacks he had, which I would say was roughly around 12, 11 around there, considering that he still isn't up instantaneously. With that being said, Cambodia back up to their high ground defense. This should be the rest of their outer turrets, and I think... I think they're strong enough to take down this Lord, no problem. So that should result in at least one other inhibitor cracked open. Let's see if they can do it. Flap. Oh, real world inflation and the final slash was used up. Flap able to flicker out before D7 pops in that bloody hunt. And Cambodia are doing a really good job at the defense right now, right? They're able to micromanage all the waves and even the enhanced lord. So zero base turrets taken here by Team Philippines. Cambodia holding out strong. Yeah, I mean, they're airtight right now, and that's good to see from Burnex Flash. I mean, they are the champions of their region. They are going to go to MSC, and considering how they're evening up against the first seeded team in the MPLPH, oh. Better be careful, D7, gun down. Oh, a big pickoff for Philippines. Unfortunately for Cambodia, they're going to have to fall back now and they will not have any say into their own jungle for the next 30 seconds. They don't have their frontliner and their main source of vision.
Dude, the cast of Curse is so real. This has happened twice already yeah, just said in it. the same game. <laughs> Usually it like paces itself over the best of five, but in the same game, come on, come on, come on. Hopefully we see it's, that it's because we're online, that. Gideon. It's the delay. It gets them. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's true, that's true. That's probably the reason why. But now, the next defense here, let's see whether Cambodia can hold strong. Ravis Fighter, now Seacat, needs to be careful, able to dodge away from the stun, but that's gonna be a final slash onto the back! A beautiful one here by ATM, he jumps back and forth, the Cold Ultra saves him for a bit, but the Vengeance is popped right before the Bloody Hunt, so it saves few. the Venice Rage comes down, Fury is able to pick up one kill off, Oakwind flickers back to safety, D7 waiting on that Iron Hook cooldown, having the flicker, ATM gonna be cancelled of his own recall here, and it's still okay for Philippines, sure, they do leave, they do lose Flap Teaser, but they do get another base turret. More map pressure. Auto minion waves pushing in both side lanes now. All right, it's very clear that Cambodia has the stronger front to back composition. I mean, looking at this replay, you can see that the Philippines must dive super deep if they want to get anywhere near Seacat or Fury. But as soon as they do, you can see the entire team of Cambodia push them forward and ATM with the flicker final slash to put Super Marco out of that fight, it becomes so much easier for a Cambodia to pump out damage. Okay, they're utilizing the Magic Sentry really well there, spawning Super Marco out, maybe an attempt at a split push there, but now with one member down, D7 with a conceal looking for Super Marco. This could be disastrous right now, Super Marco is all the way in the back. That's a go away, baited out by Few, beautifully played. Kyle TZ looking for the 50-50 play with Super Chamar right now, as Bob TZ jumps into the Raven Spider once again, buying some time right now, the Mono Placement is going to be on point, Retreat Battle, 50-50, it's Kyle TZ with a steal, oh. and in the top oh. lane, Super Marco, That's who's out looking for that split push play. Few oh. delaying the recalls, delaying the movement. Super Marco with the maneuvers up top. Doesn't have the flicker, but will oh. be able to come down the base all the way to take the victory for Team Philippines. Match point.